Episode 261 My Little Passion with You in the Cinema Rachel was aware of all the curious eyes on her, and she was puzzled. She thought that she already disguised herself well enough. How could anyone still see through it? Then she realized the true focal point of their stares. Aaron Nixon. Aaron stood tall, and although he dressed very low profile, he still looked a lot more radiant than any average person next to him. All eyes fell on him, so it was useless to disguise herself. People were still going to notice anything that was different. Rachel looked at this man scornfully. Why was he so good-looking and attractive? It was honestly kind of a flaw, too. Thus, Rachel didn't drag the time any longer and quickly chose a movie. She then dragged Aaron in. It was dark inside, and no one was going to be able to see anything. As they walked in, Aaron looked at Rachel and saw other people holding hands and cuddling. He followed and held Rachel's hand. Despite his habits over many years, he actually didn't like any intimate actions outside. However, he didn't feel that way when he held Rachel now. He was only slightly unaccustomed to it. He thought that she was his wife and nobody would have the right to say anything even if they saw him holding hands with his wife. Thus, he continued holding her as they walked in. The two of them chose a blockbuster. Rachel hugged the popcorn in one hand and held Aaron's hand in the other. Their seats were at the back and there was a lot of popcorn in her hand. The staff saw that Aaron was handsome, so they gave the little lady more. Rachel thought that this was really a superficial world. Rachel munched on the popcorn and smiled at Aaron. Why are you looking around? Don't tell me that you've never been to the cinema. Rachel asked when she saw Aaron looking at his surroundings and seemed so curious. That's right. You know that we have our own home theater. If you want to watch something, we can make it like this. Rachel said speechlessly, That's an entirely different feeling. And the seats are much more comfortable than these. You don't get it, Aaron. Don't you see? There is a certain ambience here. It's so dark and you can't see anything. <laughs> Looking at this atmosphere will make you want to just kiss and hug. Aaron faced her and looked at her mischievous smile. He immediately understood. The kiss and hug was no ordinary kiss and hug. We can kiss and hug anywhere. We can do it at home, in the hotel, and anywhere else. <laughs> what feelings would there be? I can see that you don't understand. Doing a little hanky-panky things in a place filled with people is so exciting. As the saying goes, a concubine is better than a wife, and a lover is better than a concubine. The fruit you can have is not as sweet as the fruit you can't have. Thus, people feel that it is more exciting to be sneaky. Was this something that a girl should say? Aaron always thought that this woman was very dirty, but she always had her limits. Now it was crystal clear. He realized that this was not the case. She had no limits, Aaron said in a low voice. So this is the kind of thing that you like? Rachel quickly explained. I don't like it. Be clear about it. I was just saying that others like it. It doesn't matter. I can understand if you have some special hobbies. If you want me to cooperate with you, I can also cooperate with you accordingly. As he spoke, Rachel felt his hand caressing her thigh. What? Rachel exclaimed speechlessly. Bastard! I didn't say that! She quickly hid his hand away. He smirked without a word. I'm imparting knowledge to you. Seriously, how do you date women? You had a girlfriend before and you actually don't even know all this? We don't watch movies, Aaron remarked. Then what do you guys do? Sit and face each other daily? Of course not. We watched musicals, drank tea, listened to music, ate and attended concerts. Stop, stop, stop. I get it. You guys are extremely boring. I pity Miss Mo... 
How did she meet such a blockhead? He didn't know anything. And the main thing was that she didn't ask for it. Aaron froze. Thinking back, he indeed hadn't done anything memorable with Melissa Henry's. Although they were together for so many years, he really couldn't recall anything that happened between him and Melissa. He looked at Rachel and said plainly, In the past, I didn't think too much about dating. I also didn't properly think about caring about how the other party felt. I will improve on this aspect. Rachel felt Aaron grab her hand. He said plainly, In the future, I will ask you more about what you like. Rachel's heart warmed up. She looked up at Aaron. Actually, there's no need to. That wasn't my point anyway. Aaron's serious expression always seemed to be firmly promising something. His lips curled up slightly and his eyes glistened like black gems in the dark. Nobody dared to look straight into them. One look at him would make the person feel like they were being sucked into his vortex of affection. Aaron felt that he, indeed, never took notice when he was with Melissa. He didn't take notice of her moods and never thought that making her happy would make him happy, too. He gazed at her and gently held her chin. In the darkness, the light from the screen flickered on them. His lips opened, his tongue curled around her lips, and then went into her mouth. His kiss was really getting neater. He seemed to be already familiar with all her sensitive spots. His fingers traced her body, caressing and searching for the area between her legs. She was really frightened by herself. When did she become such a lustful? However, when his tongue retreated back out, she felt disappointed. She couldn't control herself as she opened her mouth and took the initiative to find his full lips. His tongue felt her movement and instantly became fierier. Her tongue was numb from his rough movements. However, it didn't feel uncomfortable at all. She still wanted more. She almost wanted to moan. Episode 262 Her coverage that day turned out to be huge. It was over. There was no way they were going to watch the movie. Rachel gasped quietly. She pushed Aaron away and he said softly, Let's go. But the movie. If we stay here any longer, I might just eat you up right here. Rachel speechlessly said, Why are you so... Aaron replied, You're asking me? Why don't you ask yourself? If you wanted it so badly, why didn't you just say so? Rachel immediately blushed. Aaron said, You're almost sucking me in. How can I resist that? They couldn't stay in the cinema any longer. Aaron pulled her along and went home. This whole night had really been tiring. Aaron lied down on the bed. He tapped Rachel's nose and said, Tonight, you're going to squeeze me dry. Rachel wanted to cry. What did it have to do with her? Aaron said, Let's sleep. Don't touch me again. Otherwise, neither of us are going to be able to sleep tonight. He kissed her forehead and added, I already haven't slept for two days. If I still have to serve you now, you might just become a widow. Rachel heard this and couldn't help but worry about Aaron. How come... Why didn't you sleep in the past two days? Uh, I was just busy, he replied. Rachel quickly said, Go to sleep then. Don't talk anymore. Her heart was very moved. He actually didn't sleep for two days. Why didn't he say anything before? She wouldn't have suggested catching a movie then. This man was really too stubborn. Rachel thought, it looked like the filthy rich really didn't have it easy. She sighed and watched him. Not long after he laid there, he really fell asleep. Her eyes traced his perfect shape. She couldn't resist and lowered her head towards him, planting a gentle kiss on the tip of his nose. 
Perhaps it wasn't just a little temptation towards him. The next day, it only took one night for news of the Panda TV Festival to flood the pages. From the red carpet to the awards and celebration party, there was plenty of news. The reporters caught a lot of information that others didn't manage to. The biggest article was naturally focused on Jennifer. Whether it was her clothes or her prowess during the ceremony, she was amazing. However, besides Jennifer, the next biggest article turned out to be Rachel's. Because when the reporters headed back, they received information that some people recognized Rachel's clothes and jewelry that night. The things she wore were extremely pricey, and many couldn't have been bought with money. Many artists also secretly speculated about who exactly was Rachel's support. Her getup was too expensive. Just how powerful did her support need to be in order to give her all those? Furthermore, these were clearly not sponsored. Everybody knew that these brands would never look for endorsements. Thus, this meant that all her clothes and accessories were bought. Clearly, her support was someone very rich and powerful. This was naturally only one point. The other point was that the reporters captured her interaction with Arnold Nixon. The two of them looked intimate and would have made anybody imagine things. Meanwhile, she also seemed to get along well with Jennifer and that made many envy her. What exact abilities did Rachel Olsen have for her to also be able to get along with such big shots? After that, there was also a special write-up on her reaction to winning the online poll award. Her stunned and wooden expression was simply too funny. This vivid performance sent everyone into a heated discussion. They thought that Rachel Olsen was really a blur and a dazed celebrity. It made her all the more likable. All these segments put together seemed to take up an entire page. In comparison, Cassie Montana's expensive jewelry from major sponsors obviously was not talked about, even though they should have also been worth mentioning. They were merely sponsors, and although they were big brands, they did not look as good as Rachel Olson's clothes and jewelry. Every extra penny deserved its value. Big brands were selling their brand names. The real good stuff was all those unknown things owned by the filthy rich. Rachel received many congratulatory greetings in the company. Although it was just an online poll award, everyone thought that it was already very great. However, some artists in the company still treated her coldly. They thought that it was embarrassing that she didn't win after being nominated. But when they won an award, they also had a big coverage in the papers. They knew that they were already winners in this Panda TV festival. Blair said to Rachel, You must work harder next time. Rachel nodded, knowing that she had a long way to go along her path. She said, I really need to thank you for all these years, Blair. Blair laughed and said, To be honest, I actually didn't think that you would become famous in the beginning. Why? Were my qualifications that bad? Rachel asked speechlessly. Blair said, You're too dumb and silly. Also, your temper is embarrassing. But perhaps good things always come to good people. Lisa followed behind. She looked at the jewelry on Rachel and said, Yes, Blair and Rachel, you still have Aaron Nixon to help you. These accessories look so pretty. They are actually so expensive. Rachel said, Maybe Aaron only borrowed them. But looking at the accessories, Lisa's eyes continued to sparkle. Rachel only thought that this child was like this because she's never seen such things before. Thus, she didn't say much. Just then, Rachel received a call from home and she picked it up. Blair said, All right, let's not look at the reports anymore. Lisa said enviously, Rachel is so gorgeous this time. It's so good to be a star, so glamorous. That's because you never saw how much Rachel suffered when she was a small fry. 
And not everybody can be as hardworking and lucky as Rachel. Yes, Rachel is very lucky, she said. At this time, Rachel returned and said to Blair, It turns out that Edward's birthday is in a few days. Blair's eyes flashed after hearing Edward's name. Rachel said, The Nixon family is going to have a gathering, and it seems like Edward is going to be there too. Really? Blair said. Then I guess you're going to be busy soon. Blair looked outside. Edward's birthday. Actually, there were already talks of it outside. Edward's fans already started celebrating online a few days ago. It was just that Edward Nixon always kept a low profile and never really celebrated his birthday. C-Nation's media quickly spread the news of it around and celebrated Edward's birthday themselves. Blair looked and closed the news. She told Rachel that she was going to head home. Rachel asked, Do you want to go together on that day? Blair said, No, I have something to do at home. Episode 263, The Birthday Banquet Rachel said, Okay then, I can actually bring people with me. This time, it won't be at the Nixon family's house. It'll be at a resort outside. I think that since it's the president's birthday, it'll be pretty fun. Blair, you should come over if you have the time. Hmm, I'll go over if I'm free. Lisa listened from behind and said enviously, How nice! When Rachel is with Aaron, you must be surrounded by big shots like Edward's. Rachel only laughed. It's all right. Actually, I never made many contacts with the outsiders. However, she was still not that close to Lisa, so she didn't want to invite her along. She was a young girl after all. Rachel was afraid that if she went, she might not understand things and cause a nuisance. No matter what, Blair was more prim and proper. Edward's birthday had become viral online. Although his birthday was never publicly announced, his fans already found out about all his personal details, including his birthday. They weren't going to let it slide. Rachel and Aaron made preparations together and arranged the birthday banquet at a good resort. The outside of the resort was already cordoned off while everything inside the big resort was prepared for the Nixon family. Rachel spent the whole morning getting ready. Aaron helped pick out her outfit. It was gracious, proper, and brightly colored. Because she wasn't old, she naturally looked very youthful. When Aaron brought Rachel in, she quickly saw Pamela standing there with a pretty lady. The lady looked a little like Pamela, and she seemed to be in her 20s. She looked comparable to any celebrity and had an aura about her. Seeing Rachel and Aaron come in, Pamela quickly said, Anna, this is your new sister-in-law that I've mentioned, Rachel. Rachel, this is Aaron's sister, Anna. Because you didn't have a wedding ceremony, this is your first time meeting each other. It turned out to be Aaron's younger sister who was always overseas. Anna looked at Rachel and said, Oh my, sister-in-law is younger than me. Aaron, you must be much older than her. Aren't you being like an old cow eating young grass? Aaron heard this and his face darkened. Rachel smiled bashfully. Anna said, My brother must be so hard to please. It must be hard on you. Rachel laughed and said, Never mind, I'm already used to it. Aaron glared at Rachel. How am I hard to please? Since when were you the one pleasing me? He raised his brow. Hasn't it always been me pleasing you? Only Rachel understood that provocative pun. Her cheeks flushed and she reached up to strangle Aaron. Anna watched in surprise. No way! Since when did Aaron joke around with others? Am I seeing things wrong, Mom? Pamela smiled until her eyes formed two lines. Rachel taught him well. Aaron pulled his face. He held up his fist over his mouth and coughed dryly. Pamela said, They are married. If they want to joke around, they can joke around. Why would he joke around with you? 
Aaron said, Yes, you're not funny at all. There is nothing to joke about with you. Rachel initially didn't understand, but she quickly caught the meaning. He was implying that she was a joke. She turned around and asked, Who is the joke? You are the joke. Aaron said, Being the joke is your good point. You should treasure it since you don't have many merits. No, my greatest merit is that I'm so tolerant towards someone with completely no merits like you. Aaron scoffed and tapped her head. Across them, Anna said, Aaron, you really forgot all about your sister after you found your wife. You haven't seen me for a year and instead of talking to me, you're still flirting with her. Although she said that, Anna didn't seem angry at all. Instead, she found the two of them rather interesting. Aaron said, Right, you haven't returned in such a long time. How come you're back now? Pamela joined in. Anna has brought back her boyfriend. She said that she's going to marry him. Really? Aaron asked. Somebody actually wants you. You're so fierce. Anna retorted willfully. You are full of problems and have that illness, but people still want you. Pamela was also very happy that she was finally going to marry. Aaron asked, Where is my brother-in-law? I don't see him. Anna's expression stiffened. She said, He's not here yet. I'll check later. Outside, someone announced that Edward had arrived. Aaron said, Then you can introduce him to me later. I'm going to greet Edward first. As he spoke, he tugged Rachel along with him and they walked over. Anna took out her phone and found a number. She took a deep breath and dialed it. Blake Cooper, are you coming? Anna, something cropped up. I might be a little delayed. What happened? Anna asked strangely. Just a small thing. I'll go over it once I'm done. I'll call you. Blake hung up. Anna held her phone and her expression lingered for a moment. Turning around, she saw Pamela walking towards her. What's wrong, Anna? Anna quickly went back to her normal self. Blake said that something cropped up and he'll be here later. I see. Okay, you should be more understanding when men get busy. He came here with you from really far away. It's understandable that he has some matters left unsettled. Although... I do remember that you were together in high school with him, but he wasn't your boyfriend then, right? Anna said, Yeah, we only began our relationship when we went to study abroad together. Ah, I remember during that time. He seemed to have a girlfriend. A ripple flashed across Anna's eyes. She held Pamela's arm. It's not like I didn't have a boyfriend either back then. It's all in the past, right? Very well. I just remember that you two got along very well in high school. I haven't seen him in years, so I wanted to ask. Yes, she had been good friends with Blake Cooper in high school. At that time, he had a girlfriend and she had a boyfriend. However, nobody knew that she had feelings for him since then. After that, he broke up and went to study in the U.S. She went too. In their first year... They would occasionally chat on the phone as friends. One year, they spent camping together. She shared a tent with them. The minor incident sparked a fire. Their friendship shifted to a romantic relationship. Pamela remembered clearly that he had a girlfriend back then. However, she forgot that his ex-girlfriend was Anna's best friend, Fiona Diaz. On the other side... Edward Nixon arrived and everybody gathered at the door. Edward thanked everyone and said embarrassingly, Sorry to make all of you spend so much organizing a birthday banquet for me. Aaron replied, Otherwise, you would be too busy that no excuses would make you come back. Episode 264 We Didn't Fancy Each Other Rachel stood beside Aaron. She looked at Edward and said plainly, Happy birthday. Actually, talking to Edwards was a little weird for Rachel. Just like how, in the beginning, she always felt as if she was floating around in a dream when she was with Aaron. 
She thought that her real life was too different, but it was indeed her own real life. Edward Nixon smiled and let everybody head back in. There were many people present. This time, it was not just the Nixon family members who were invited. There were also some politicians and his supporters. Naturally, they were all successful people. Rachel looked over there and suddenly saw someone in the distance looking at Aaron. Rachel found the cold smile familiar. Who was the man who was with Melissa Henrys that day? His name was Ronnie. Why was he here? Aaron also noticed him just then. He narrowed his eyes as he looked over. Then he pulled Rachel along and said, Come on, let's go in. It was early spring and the day was still cool. They needed to wear coats outside. After Rachel and Aaron went in, they took off their coats and let the maids take them away. Just then, Ronnie's voice snorted behind. Aaron, walking away after seeing me? What does this mean? Aaron turned around. I'm not avoiding you. I just have nothing to say to you. Ronnie's eyes looked up and down the pretty Rachel. He laughed and asked, Why? Do you really have nothing to say? Or is it because you feel uncomfortable that your ex-girlfriend is now with me? Aaron scoffed. He looked coldly at Ronnie. If you're talking about Melissa, then whatever she does now already has nothing to do with me. If you really want to be together, be my guest. Ronnie really didn't expect to see Aaron suddenly so casual. Ha! Huh, what a good pretense. I don't believe that you'd get over your old lover so quickly. Please watch your tongue. Isn't it rude to talk about some old lover in front of my wife? That's right. I don't care anymore because I'm already a married man now. Everything in the past is already put behind me. He grabbed Rachel's hand and turned away. Ronnie narrowed his eyes at him and couldn't quite believe it. Rachel also turned back to look. She then looked up at Aaron. He may or may not have said that on purpose, but hearing him speak so firmly made Rachel really happy in her heart. She looked up at his indifferent expression. For the first time, she felt that his thin expressions made him really handsome. Ronnie was completely speechless after he got talked down like that, and Aaron's expression just now <laughs> really killed it. The Nixon family members were all inside, and Edward invited some people to join. But since she ultimately spent more time with the family, Anna stood with them after Aaron and Rachel entered. Just then, Anna said, I don't know what to get for Edward, so I bought him a tie. I wish that he'll quickly find a wife so I don't have to give such gifts to him anymore. She said to Rachel, Edward and Aaron are usually way too boring. Besides working and earning money, I don't think they have any other hobbies. What fools? Rachel said, Yes. And they're especially old-fashioned. Anna listened and said, Yes, 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 especially old-fashioned. So how did you take a fancy to him, Rachel? Rachel thought, We took it to the bed first before taking a fancy. So by putting the cart before the horse, who knew that she would become his wife? Well, I was forced into it. Aaron looked down and glared at Rachel. Rachel laughed and stuck her tongue out. After hearing Anna talk about birthday presents, she was reminded about it and she forgot where she had placed hers. She searched her pockets and realized that it wasn't there. She thought carefully and tapped her own head. Oh no, I left my gift in the office. Aaron looked at her speechlessly. Look at your clumsy self. What kind of intellect do you have? Rachel glared at him. She turned around to call Blair, hoping that she could bring it over. Blair answered the call and helplessly agreed to it. She could only open up Rachel's box, and since it wasn't appropriate to send others to the banquet, she had no choice but to make the trip herself. When Melissa Henrys entered, she looked at Ronnie and asked, What happened? What took you so long to pick me up? Ronnie scoffed and said, Are you that anxious to meet your ex-lover? 
It's a pity. I asked him just now, and he said he gave us his blessings. Melissa's face changed. She looked inside and angrily said, I don't believe you. He won't do that. Ronnie said, If you don't believe it, you can ask him yourself. However, he's surrounded by the Nixon family. Do you dare to go up to him? Doesn't the entire Nixon family hate you? Don't end up crying when they chase you off. It wasn't easy for Melissa to get Ronnie to bring her here. She was not going to get chased out so easily. She lifted her head and looked in that direction. Indeed, Rachel and Aaron were standing with some other people. Aaron had a hand on Rachel's shoulder as they talked. They looked so intimate that Melissa felt incredibly jealous. Right next to them, she saw that the annoying Anna actually had come back. When she was with Aaron last time, Anna was dissatisfied with her. She always picked on her, but now Melissa couldn't believe her eyes. How was Anna talking and laughing with Rachel? Melissa gritted her teeth in anger. She watched Rachel stand in the middle of the Nixon family members and couldn't help but think that the spot was once hers. It was hers. She should be the one standing there and being the envy of others. Rachel and Aaron were still unaware that Melissa's eyes were already fixated on them. Seeing that Rachel had not eaten anything, Aaron walked over to take some food for Rachel. Rachel said, I wonder if Blair is here yet. All right, I'll get someone to escort her in a bit. Don't worry about it. It's okay even if you don't give any presents. Edward still owes me several million. He won't care if we don't give him anything. Oh, he owes you that much? Of course. Your husband plays a big part in national duty. Really? I'm in awe. Hubby is so great. She obliged and praised him. Master is so great that the servant is in awe. Master, quick, tell me. What positions do you want at home? I'll do anything. Please, just don't abandon me. Aaron's face darkened. Looking at Rachel, who couldn't be serious, he really didn't understand how he could marry such a wife. But about the positions... He laughed and suddenly went close to her face. You'll really do any position? Rachel was only joking, but she looked at Aaron's face right in front of hers and his eyes glistened with excitement. The evil aura wrapped around her, and it was so menacing that she couldn't stand it. No, I was saying, then you'll be on top tonight. Episode 265 She was taken away by the guards. I, 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 I don't know how. <laughs> I'll teach you. No, no, no. Rachel was shy. Be on top? She didn't know how to take charge like that at all. Aaron couldn't control his laughter. This Rachel already did it so many times. But every time this was brought up, she still behaved as shyly as a young girl. Thus, he enjoyed teasing her even more. No, when the time comes, you'll say yes, Aaron said casually, as if it was a matter of fact. He blinked his eyes and his long eyelashes partially shielded the sparkle inside. Rachel felt that he was so handsome. There was almost a feeling as if she was falling into her heart, but she quickly turned around. Eat your food. She angrily took up a ball of food and stuffed it into his mouth. After he swallowed it, he remembered that she used her bare hands to touch it. However, he only frowned and didn't feel a tinge of disgust. He simply swallowed it, vengefully took some food, and stuffed them into her mouth, too. Rachel immediately bit his finger. Hey, are you a dog? Why did you bite me? Her teeth stayed on his finger. She was ruthless enough to bite him until it hurt. He withdrew his hand and looked at the marks on his finger. He smiled and licked it gently. In the past, he would have been so disgusted at saliva like this that he would have puked. However, 
He actually now felt a fiery feeling sweep over his body. He looked at Rachel's delicate face stained red, like a red moon before a windy night. It was so red that he liked it. He wanted to just have her right there and then. It was truly his first time having such malicious thoughts about a woman, and he thought about it anywhere and any time. Seeing Rachel avoid eye contact with him, he laughed and reached out to wipe the dirt off her lips. Look at you be so messy, Rachel said. Why are you still so close if I'm messy then? Why? Don't you dislike dirt? Aaron said, I dislike it very much initially. <laughs> I knew it. Aaron looked at her. However, I'm already used to it now anyway. Rachel asked depressingly, What do you mean you're used to it? Otherwise, although you're so messy, you're already married to me. You're my wife, so I have no choice but to accept it, right? You... Can't you carry a conversation well? Don't you think that a husband so honest and unhypocritical like me is extremely rare these days? Rachel said, Yeah, that's why I'm able to accept you too. If it were other people, they'd probably be angered away by you. <laughs> Melissa Henrys looked over from afar and saw Aaron chatting with Rachel. The two of them were close. Aaron wore black. She wore white. Although their colors were contrasting, they looked like they were wearing matching couple clothing. Aaron always liked wearing black clothes. It was mysterious and let him keep a low profile. It was also so suave that people couldn't take their eyes off him. But now the person beside him was Rachel. Melissa felt extremely sour. She accompanied Aaron for so many years and it was that little slut Rachel who ultimately benefited. She watched Aaron bend down to feed Rachel. He even reached out and used his fingers to wipe her mouth. He took such great care of Rachel. The Aaron was actually taking care of Rachel. Aaron had never taken care of her like that all these years. In fact, she couldn't even come that close to him. On top of that, his habits were usually individualistic. He didn't like being too close and he didn't like intimacy. But now, the two of them sat there so lovingly that it really made Melissa want to die from jealousy. Why was Aaron so good to Rachel? Ronnie looked at Melissa's angry appearance and laughed. Enough! Stop staring! They don't know anyway. Let's go and get some drinks. We'll be happy ourselves. Don't touch me. Don't touch you? Aaron is not touching you. He's touching someone else. If I don't touch you, nobody will want to touch you anymore. Stop looking. Come on. He looks so happy while you're still so angry here. Is it really worth it? Melissa also knew that it wasn't worth it. However, she simply couldn't accept that Aaron wasn't hers anymore. He was getting more and more intimate with Rachel. If this continued, did this really mean that Aaron fell for Rachel? Ronnie ushered Melissa to one side for some drinks. On the other side, Blair reached the entrance and was looking left and right. She couldn't find Rachel. The resort had already been cordoned off and nobody else could enter. Blair looked around with the present still in her hands. She took out her phone and called Rachel. However, she couldn't get through. When she was about to make the second call, someone already discovered her. Linda stood at the side and watched Blair. She found her familiar. This woman. Her eyes lit up. She suddenly recalled. Wasn't she the person that time? She and Edward had... Blair turned around and saw a woman dressed neatly in a black uniform blocking her. She froze. Miss Blair, this way, please. I, Blair quickly said, I'm not here to look for any trouble. I didn't intend to come here, too. There is no use in telling me whether you intended to or not. This way, please. Blair still wanted to explain, 
but a few of Edward's guards were already standing in front of her. Inside, Frederick called Aaron out to settle some matters. Rachel watched Aaron's back and thought that he was indeed busy. People would still come to look for him if he snuck a break here. Just then, Anna walked over and asked, Rachel, did my brother abandon you again? Rachel laughed. Yeah, but it's all right. I'm used to it. Looking at Anna, Rachel thought that if this whole family went out on the streets together, they'd be so blindingly bright. Each one of them was too beautiful. Anna was also very prettier than most girls. This kind of beauty was different from Aaron and the guys. She was pretty and gorgeous. Just from a glance, she was stunning. Anna said, Aaron can be a little too busy. The entire family's integrity rests on his shoulders. It's lonely at the top, and he is too serious. He wants everything to be perfect, so he does everything personally. Of course, that makes him even busier. People in C Nation admires his position, but they are also afraid of it. However, they have no clue that being able to sit at this enviable position costs a very huge price. Rachel looked into the distance and her heart ached. She sighed and said, Yes, he's really very busy. That's why I can only be understanding towards him. Anna said, Actually, Aaron is already very good when he's with you. I've never seen him accompany that woman like this before. Episode 266 His sister was also so capable. Rachel heard this and immediately thought of Melissa. Are, are you talking about Melissa? Aaron only ever had one girlfriend in the past. If it wasn't Melissa, who else could it be? Anna saw Rachel mention Melissa so graciously without looking affected at all. She smiled and answered, Yeah. When Aaron was with Melissa, he never accompanied her like this. Don't even mention accompanying her. The two would sit together so squarely, like a pair of wooden blocks. They didn't move even just a little bit. Really? I suppose so. Aaron is so old-fashioned while Melissa is a wealthy family's daughter. She's not as noisy as me, so when they're together, it must be because they have to appear so elegant that they end up being boring. Anna said, Who knows? Anyway, Aaron will never look after her or feed her because he never sat and chatted with her for that long. Aaron actually never liked chatting with others. Rachel listened in puzzlement. Is that so? He's a man of few words. He was like that when we got together at first, but it became better after we got closer. Anna laughed and shook her head. See? It's because Aaron is with you. That's why he is more talkative. You have no idea what outsiders say about him. They call him the Demon King of Ice. As long as you don't agree with him, he'll stare at you coldly, and that stare can kill someone. Who would dare to talk to him? Just then, Aaron returned. As he walked over, he looked at Anna. Are you still talking bad about me? Anna said, No, I'm putting in good words for you. She winked at Rachel. Rachel laughed and said, Yes, She's talking about how strict you are and how everyone is afraid of you. Anna heard Rachel's words and almost burst out laughing. Worried that she would give herself away, Rachel quickly said, Well, Anna, which university did you study at? Anna said, I'm at the University of Pennsylvania, studying business and business administration. Rachel blinked. Wow! That sounds great. Aaron replied, Yeah, do you think everyone is a blockhead like you? That's the top business school in the US. It's not easy to get in there. Idiot, why are you insulting me for no reason? 
However, Rachel was filled with admiration. The Nixon's family's genes were so good, each one was more capable than the previous. Rachel said, Anna, you're so smart. You're more capable than your Aaron. Anna smiled and looked at Aaron. I'm only better in academics. Aaron has a lot more experience in the real battlefield as he has a PhD in several professional fields. I can't compare to him. Rachel looked at Aaron, who was smiling proudly. Rachel glared at him and then said to Anna, Anna, there must be a lot of people chasing after you when you're in school. You're so pretty and smart. Anna said, Not really. Aaron said, All right, you don't have to act humble in front of Rachel. He lowered his head and said to Rachel, She's indeed very capable, and she has no lack of suitors in school. She's the campus belle and the school's top scholar. She's a legend among the high schools in C Nation, but it's a pity. He looked at Anna. You made it all too cheap for that Cooper family's kid, right? Why isn't he here yet? Anna looked at her wristwatch and said, I'll ask in a bit. She got up, smiled, and left. Rachel looked at her back as she left and asked Aaron, Is Anna going to get married? Aaron nodded. That's right. Rachel asked, You don't like the guy? She could tell that Aaron didn't look pleased. Aaron said, I just heard from Mom that the guy is the Cooper family's kid. The Cooper family is M Nation's royalty and M Nation's constitutional monarchy. You should know that since he's part of the M Nation royalty. So he's of equal status as us. Oh, then isn't that good? It's only right to have equal status. Aaron, if you didn't have me, you would have married someone of equal status too. Aaron replied, That's too bad. I'm already married and there's no turning back. Not really. If we divorced one day, you can still continue to look for that equal partner, Rachel said. Hearing Rachel still thinking about a divorce, Aaron immediately shot her a look. Don't talk nonsense, he said coldly. What? If I angered you one day and you wanted to leave me, that would be a possibility. You're always angering me every day. Since when have I made you leave? Aaron said. Rachel looked at him. Well, you're so fierce to me every day. Who knows? Maybe one day you'll go overboard. Since when have I been fierce to you? Of course you have. You've always been fierce to me. I still remember at the beginning, you didn't want me to come close to you. You would run me down whenever we had a disagreement. Aaron thought about their interactions in the beginning. It did seem to be like that. It was just that, at that time, Aaron indeed hated her. He hated her for ruining the peace in his life and barging into his life just like that. However, he didn't know that he would become accustomed to a different kind of life one day. His hate for her wasn't that kind of disgusted hatred. He only felt that she always appeared out of nowhere in his life. He couldn't get rid of her no matter what. In the end, it became a sense of helplessness. Fine, I apologize. I was indeed fierce to you during that initial period, but you weren't any better to me. <laughs> you were so fierce. How else did you expect me to react? You could have at least tried to accommodate my life. Not only did you fail to do that, you even deliberately posed in front of me. Of course I couldn't take it. However, he still accepted her in the end. Not only did he accept her, he even began to get used to her actions. Once he got used to it, it wasn't that insufferable anymore. Blair was brought into what looked like an office. Below her feet were gray marble tiles and in front of her were dense curtains blocking out the sunlight. Only a little light peeped through and dimly lit the room, leaving shadows dancing on the ground. 
Blair was still trying to figure out where she was when she heard the door open from behind. A person entered. She couldn't tell what brand the custom-made leather shoes were from. The footsteps rang in the air. She turned around and was met with a pair of dark eyes. Edward Nixon. Blair's heart sank. Edward looked at the woman in front of him. She was staring back at him cautiously. Her face was small and she wasn't the type to look stunning with just one glance. However, what stood out were her sparkling eyes. When she gazed at him, it gave him the illusion that she could see through everything. Imperious. Exactly. It gave one an imperious feeling. Episode 267 Someone Came Here to Cause a Ruckus Edward stood in front of Blair. She was still feeling embarrassed as a problem that she thought she solved had just appeared right in front of her again. He looked different from on screen. He seemed very cold. I already told you before, if you need money, I can give it to you. But don't appear around here again. Why? Are you going back on your word now? Blair looked up at him. You've got it wrong. I came here to give Rachel something that she forgot. I never wanted to come here. Edward asked, What do you need to give her? A birthday present that she left in the office. I think it's for you, she replied seriously. She turned around to find the gift, but it wasn't there. She panicked and then recalled that when she first came in, she was afraid that Rachel would lose it. She didn't know where to go either, so she quickly left it in the car. Edward saw her empty hands. There was obviously nothing. He laughed coldly. It looks like you weren't completely prepared. Blair looked at Edward. How can I prove to you that I didn't come here with any other motive? Edward said, That is now your problem. So you think of that yourself. Otherwise, you can only stay here today. Why? Blair looked up and did not show any sign of weakness. You don't have the evidence to show that I'm here to get close to you, do you? Edward said, But there are people outside. I can't take any risks just to come up with evidence for this problem. Thus, you'll have to suffer today. No, but I still have things to do. Blair reached up and scratched him. Edward looked down coldly at her and grabbed her hand moment, Blair forgot that she was scratching Edward Nixon. She quickly stepped back and let go. She said, It's really not my intention to try to get close to you. I've told your people countless times that I didn't mean it. Whether it's about that thing or... Stop. The mention of that thing made him frown and turn around. The temperature in the room became much lower because of his eyes. Blair gritted her teeth. I'm really just here to look for Rachel. If you have something for Rachel, I'll get somebody to give it to her. You must stay here now. You... Edward already walked out. Blair could only sit inside and speechlessly watch him leave. Outside, Linda lowered her head and said to Edward, Mr. President, how do you want to deal with her now? Edward looked out the window and thought about how they just interacted right then. Watch her. Wait for the party to end before letting her leave. Yes. Edward didn't think that he would meet her again. However, she was Rachel's agent. They were so close to each other that the possibility of meeting was always there. Aaron couldn't find Edward anywhere. After a long while, he finally saw Edward come out from inside with a bothered expression on his face. Aaron walked over. Edward, what's happened? Edward looked at him and shook his head. Nothing. There were just some matters at work. Edward turned back to see that Blair was still locked inside. Rachel saw Aaron talking with Edward, so she took some food and walked around on her own. When she was walking down, a hand forcefully pulled her aside. Rachel turned to see that Melissa was actually here. Her eyes widened as she looked at Melissa. She was smiling coldly at her and seeping with hatred. 
Rachel instantly thought about how it would look if she caused a ruckus in the presence of the entire Nixon family. Melissa, no matter what you say, say it all to Aaron. I have no part in this. Melissa glared at her and was about to slap her. However, Rachel grabbed her hand and prevented the slap. Melissa didn't expect her to react so quickly. She wanted to use her other hand but was also stopped by Rachel. Rachel grabbed both of her arms and she looked at Melissa. What are you trying to do, Melissa? The whole Nixon family is here. If you create a ruckus here, it won't benefit anybody. Melissa then thought about it and grunted coldly. Great! I believe it's more likely that my persistence won't benefit you. Tell me, does the Nixon family know that your marriage with Aaron is contractual and set for a divorce? Rachel froze. She didn't think that Melissa would bring this up. Aaron told her all these things in the beginning and Rachel could understand why, but she didn't expect her to actually bring it up now. Melissa noticed that she was indeed afraid. She scoffed and asked, Aren't you likable? When the Nixon family knows that you agreed to this contractual marriage because of money and not love, you'll see if they still think that a prostitute like you is likable. Rachel was still stunned, but Melissa's face suddenly changed and she began to cry as she looked behind. She heard Melissa wail tragically, Aaron, you see? You see how Rachel treats me when she sees me? Aaron was here? Rachel turned around. Aaron already pushed Melissa away without hesitation. Melissa stumbled before regaining her balance. This place was further away, so nobody saw them. Aaron glanced at his family to check if they were out of their sight. He then looked at Melissa with disgust. What are you doing here? Melissa didn't expect him to push her away and stand beside Rachel without even asking anything. You! She hit me! Aren't you going to ask anything? Enough, Melissa. She would never hit you. If you want to create a nuisance, you can leave here and do it as much as you like at home. Rachel's heart moved when Aaron stood by her side. She looked up at Aaron and felt inexplicably touched. Melissa smiled coldly at Aaron. Aaron! You're so ruthless. Aaron did not have a slight tinge of trust in her now. He only wanted her to leave as soon as possible. Who let you in here? Melissa said. As a lady from the Henry's family, can't I come here? I'm giving you the time now to leave this place, Aaron ordered coldly. Melissa was unwilling. <laughs> what right do you have to do that? I'm not leaving. You're not leaving? I don't want to make things ugly for you, Melissa. Leave by yourself. Otherwise, I'll make sure you're taken away. I'm giving you a choice now. You... Melissa looked at Aaron in disbelief. Was he really that heartless towards her now? Melissa said, Fine. If you dare to take me away, I'll shout immediately. I want to ask the Nixon family if they know that you and Rachel share a contractual marriage... Do they know how Rachel is cheating them and that you only married Rachel to appease them? I want to ask them if they know that this is all an act. Episode 268 Why did I ever love a woman like that? Aaron's eyes paused. Feeling Melissa grit her teeth, he realized that for the first time that this woman had a fierce side to her. He never worried about having to explain the situation to his family, but it was definitely going to invite unnecessary trouble if they caused a scene here. Especially in the eyes and judgment of others, it wasn't going to be good for Rachel. Aaron said, If you want to fight me, it's not going to do anybody good. Melissa, I advise you to back off now. No, I'm not backing off. Why should I? It's all because of you, Aaron. You're so ruthless. Rachel, he's so ruthless. He can just throw away many years of a relationship like that. The next person he'll abandon will be you. Aaron frowned. Taking the chance while Melissa was still talking, he gave a look to his men behind him. Before Melissa could react, 
someone covered her mouth forcefully. She was immediately dragged away. She struggled, but since she couldn't win the bodyguard, she continued being pulled away. Silence followed, and Aaron only sighed in relief after she was gone. Rachel said, She... Don't bother me about her. She must be crazy. But what if she really tells the family? I'll let my men keep watch and make sure she doesn't go to our family. Anyway, she actually wouldn't dare do that. Rachel nodded. After it was confirmed that Melissa was sent out, Aaron brought Rachel back in. The banquet continued here at night. Rachel and Aaron already decided to stay at one of the villas at the resort. Although Rachel spent the entire day playing, she was dead tired. She sat there and dozed off. Aaron saw her and said to Pamela, Mom, if there's nothing else, I'm heading back first. Pamela looked at the drowsy Rachel. She smiled and agreed. Aaron patted Rachel and woke her up. She sleepily left the place with Aaron. Anna watched the two of them leave. She smiled and said to Pamela, I didn't think that Aaron would care so much for someone else. Pamela replied, Indeed. I feel much more at ease seeing him change. He's no longer that cold and heartless anymore. Otherwise, I would have been really afraid that he wouldn't be able to find anybody and would have to spend the rest of his life alone. Anna said, Yes. Also, I think that Rachel is a very good person. Yes, I liked her the moment I saw her. Anna said, That's right. She looks so simple and pure. So enviably pure. Pamela asked, Didn't you say that Blake Cooper would come soon? Where is he? Anna's face changed. She turned away and quickly changed the subject. Rachel walked on the road with a whole entourage behind her, ready at her service. Rachel was already used to it. Whenever Aaron stepped out, it was always such a big commotion. She found it scary initially, but now she didn't think too much of it. She was rather unstable and almost fell. Thankfully, Aaron was beside her and holding her arm. When he got a good grip on her, he frowned at her. <laughs> Look at yourself. Ugh, what would you do without me? Yes, what would she have done without him? She dared not to think about that question. My legs are just feeling numb from standing the whole day. I'm not that clumsy, okay? Rachel retorted. Aaron heard this and immediately looked at her legs. What? Your legs are numb? Yeah, just a little. It's all right, Rachel said. However, Aaron carried her up. Hey, you. Don't move. We'll talk when we go in he said as he picked her light body and headed towards the nearby villa. Very quickly, they were inside and the people behind them dispersed. He let the maids rest for the day, leaving only him and Rachel in the big room. Aaron let her down on the sofa and she sat there. After that, he squatted down and reached out to take off her shoes. Realizing that he was taking her shoes off, Rachel quickly said, No, it's dirty. I've been wearing these shoes the whole day and never took them off. Aaron looked up at her. No wonder your legs are numb. You wore shoes for the entire day. Why didn't you take them off to go check your feet? Hold on. Let me check what's going on. But, but aren't you afraid of smelly feet? She looked at him and mumbled. Aaron looked at her. Do you have smelly feet? Of course not, Rachel hurriedly replied. Then there's no problem, he said, and continued taking off her shoes. Rachel wanted to say that although there was no odor, it was still dirty. However, Aaron didn't seem to care. He took her shoes off and pressed her feet. Rachel looked at him in embarrassment. It's dirty. Don't you dislike it? Aaron said, Even if you're dirty, you're my wife. As your husband, I can't dislike my own wife. Rachel felt her heart become so sweet as if she ate honey. She looked at Aaron kneeling gracefully on the floor. She couldn't help but feel amazed. 
How did she ever meet such a man? No wonder Melissa was very angry. She also thought that she was obviously so average. Rachel said, Melissa must be so mad that you treated her that way today. She asked for it. She was too much today, Aaron said. Aaron didn't want to talk about Melissa at all. Until now, he still couldn't understand why he thought that Melissa was gracious, elegant, and beautiful in the beginning. He saw wrongly. He was blind to fall in love with such a woman. He never regretted doing anything, but this matter made him regretful. He regretted wasting so many years with Melissa and for even wanting to marry her. But Melissa was this kind of woman. Thus, Aaron only wanted to treat Rachel better. He didn't despise Rachel at all, especially when he thought about how Rachel didn't despise him. He thought that a husband and wife indeed couldn't hate each other for their flaws. He puked so horrendously at that time and she didn't say anything. She only took off the shoes and didn't care about the filth. When Aaron and Rachel went in, they didn't plan to go out again. Rachel went to the shower while Aaron sat outside listening to the water run. He suddenly thought of how he had been married to Rachel for so long, but there were never any romantic gestures. They never had a wedding ceremony or wedding rings. There was nothing. Aaron began to blame himself. Thinking about it, he picked up his phone and made a call. Send two people here now. I need help with something. Inside, Rachel finished showering and didn't feel tired anymore. She wore her pajamas and walked out comfortably. However, when she stepped out, she saw petals on the bed. Warm music echoed, but there was no one in sight. Episode 269 Want you to be happy because of me. Rachel stopped rubbing her hair. She was still stunned as she listened to the gentle music. Then she felt a strong breath getting closer behind her. She quickly turned around and saw the man standing at the door. He wore a plain V-neck t-shirt that revealed his exquisite collarbone. Below was a pair of cotton trousers which toned down his ferociousness. He now had a rare, warming aura. Rachel froze and looked at the man in front of her. He suddenly walked over while his deep eyes gazed into Rachel's eyes. They were like diamonds shining brightly in the galaxy. His smile gave her an illusion of deep affection swarming in her chest. Aaron looked at her, not knowing if this was a special arrangement made by Pamela or if it was because this was the honeymoon suite. The bed was large and round, and it faced the man-made lake. On the other side of the lake, they could see the flickering of stars in the night sky. It looked just like a painting. Rachel had never experienced such a romantic scene. She looked at Aaron and asked in surprise, What is this, Aaron? She only took a little over ten minutes to shower, and he was able to prepare all of this? Was he a magician? Aaron didn't speak. His dark eyes stared into hers. As if understanding what he wanted to do, her heart began to fire up. She lowered her head slightly and, secretly, looked up at this man. Her face blushed in an instant. The more she looked at him, the more tongue-tied she got. When she gazed at his red lips, she had the urge to rush up to him and bite them. His lips were thin but extremely full. They opened slightly and made Rachel's heart fire up even more. Sauntering up to Aaron, she said, Well, you... Tonight, Aaron didn't want to get into the unusual frenzy with her. He walked slowly towards her and gently lowered her head. His long fingers combed through her hair. Her head naturally tilted upward. Her eyes looked shyly at him. He wanted her to feel that their marriage was blissful and not an obligation. 
He also wanted her to feel that their marriage could bring her happiness instead of being a burden. However, since he actually never interacted with a woman normally before, he had no idea what a woman needed. He thought that their first time was too sloppy. He wanted her in that blurry state and he assumed that it must have hurt for her too. Other girls definitely had a wonderful first time, but she suffered in pain. After they married, he never touched her either. Thus, he never gave her a good memory at all. So this time, he slowly moved closer to her. He gently touched her lips. Seeing her close her eyes, he then gently kissed her lips. Rachel moaned and felt his kiss. It was as gentle as the music. It was so gentle that it amazed her. He put her down gently on the bed as if she was the most precious jewel. He kissed every inch of her skin on her body. Slowly. Softly. He lit up every cell in her body. He was a little nervous, a little uncomfortable, and a little impatient. He was a little worried that she wouldn't feel good. He was worried if he was doing the right thing and if he was making her happy. He really felt as if he was a novice. It was as if it was the first time that he wanted to know a woman, and that made him nervous. Rachel grabbed his hand and he greedily bit her finger. Had this man gone crazy tonight? Her body arched uncontrollably as if she wanted to welcome his body. He spread her legs and Rachel exclaimed, Aaron, what are you doing? No. It's fine. Don't move. Leave tonight to me. No, no, I can't. It's dirty. You... Don't move. Be good. Let me take a look. Mm, mm, I really can't. You... Rachel felt extremely shy, but she was completely weakened by the chaos in her mind. She softened under his teasing. She had no resistance at all as she collapsed in his gentleness. He liked looking at her when she was dazed. He liked seeing her feel good. Every expression of hers seemed to encourage him and make him feel that it was all worth it. In an instant, his heart had a kind of urge to offer the whole world to her, just to see her smile. Although it was extremely unbearable for him, and he wanted to explode, he waited until she relaxed completely before he hugged her tightly. That night, Rachel felt something that she never felt before. She felt especially fulfilled. Naturally, it wasn't her who moved, but she still felt tired. The two of them hugged tightly and fell asleep together. Melissa was so quietly brought out of the house. Outside, she didn't expect that Aaron would actually treat her this way. She quickly called Ronnie and he came over to pick her up. Seeing Melissa's ashen face, he laughed and brought her back to the Henry's family. Inside her room, she angrily flung everything inside and created a mess. Ronnie hadn't gotten his end of the bargain, so he naturally didn't leave. Seeing her so angry, he went to embrace her. Melissa jumped in shock and pushed Ronnie away. But Ronnie didn't let go. He looked at her and said, All right, you're still saving yourself for Aaron? Come on, let's have some fun. This is something that will make both of us feel better. Why are you resisting? Melissa said, huh, My first time is for Aaron. Why would I tarnish myself with a playboy like you? You've had so many women outside. I despise your filth. Ronnie froze. He looked at Melissa in disbelief. No way. Your first time? Who are you trying to kid? Melissa said, Why would I lie to you? <laughs> you think everybody is like you. Weren't you with Aaron for many years? But Aaron is a gentleman. He would never do anything to me. 
Melissa didn't mention Aaron's illness. This was the Nixon family's secret, and she wasn't planning to let Ronnie know either. Ronnie scoffed and said, Then you don't understand men at all. If a man has feelings towards a woman, the body reacts first. He was with you for so many years, and yet he never touched you? Are you sure that he really loved you? Episode 270 I have a way to deal with him. Melissa's heart froze with his words. Her eyes shifted. Melissa naturally wouldn't admit that Aaron never loved her. Aaron must have loved her. Otherwise, how else could she be his only woman all those years? Why else didn't he interact with other women? Aaron was not the kind of person he thought he was. Not every man was the same. <laughs> You're lying. I don't believe you. Ronnie grunted. Anyway, when a man and a woman are together and he can still cover her up and chat with her, then he absolutely has no feelings for her. Just like you and I. You see, I'm always thinking about sleeping with you. This proves that I like you. Get lost. Not everybody is as wretched as you. Melissa would never believe his words anyway. Ronnie said, Yes, I'm wretched. But it's because I like you. Why don't you give up? I can see that Rachel looks like a little vixen. I'm afraid that Aaron won't come back to you. Melissa heard this and got even angrier. He actually still thought that Rachel was pretty. You! Uh, you! Ronnie! Get out of my sight! Hey! I, I messed up! I messed up! I shouldn't have said that! He quickly changed his words. A wise man knew better than to fight when the odds were against him. He hugged Melissa and said, You're the most beautiful woman. Rachel just looks like a little vixen while you're the elegant one. You can't be compared to that kind of girl. Melissa stared fiercely at Ronnie. I won't let Rachel live peacefully. Aaron is mine, and he still loves me. He's only being enchanted by Rachel for the time being. One day, he'll come to realize that I'm the good one. Until then, you have to help me. Why should I help you? What a joke. Your split with him is advantageous to me, Ronnie said. Melissa said, I promise you that as long as you help me get Aaron, you'll be able to sleep with me. Otherwise, you can forget about it. Huh. Ronnie's mind turned. He looked at Melissa. Really? You're not lying to me, are you? Why would I lie to you? I saved my first time for so long only to give it to Aaron. If you can help me fulfill my wish, I'll satisfy you. It's because I have this wish, and that's why I can't touch anyone else. However, I've kept it for so long, and I'm not willing to just give it away so easily. That is why, if you help me fulfill my wish, I'll be able to give you what you want. Ronnie didn't care about the wish. Hearing her say that, he smiled and said, Fine, I'll help you. Tell me, how can I help? I was with Aaron for so long, and he loved me madly. Of course, he never hid any secrets from me. I know many secrets about the Nixon family. What secrets? The Nixon family stored Aaron's sperm in the Nixon family sperm bank, just in case anything happened to him, and there wouldn't be any successors. If you help me get it, I can have Aaron's child. Then the Nixon family will definitely not allow their own bloodline to fall outside. Aaron will have to divorce Rachel and be with me. Melissa knew that Aaron kept his sperm, but it wasn't kept by the Nixon family. Aaron did it himself when he was with her. He was worried that he wouldn't be able to touch her. So he specifically stored his sperm hoping that they would be able to have a child through artificial insemination after their marriage. That way, the Nixon family wouldn't put her in a spot. 
Aaron loved her so much, and yet Ronnie didn't think that he did. <laughs> what did he know? Aaron was a great man. It was only because of his illness that he couldn't touch her. Otherwise, he would have been hers a long time ago, and not with that little slut, Rachel. How could he really love that little slut, Rachel? Ronnie asked. Aaron actually stored his sperm? Really? Okay, then. I'll help you. But you must remember that you have to serve me well. The thought of sleeping with Aaron's woman made him look forward. If Melissa married Aaron, he would then tell Aaron that he slept with Melissa. Aaron would definitely be hopping mad. By that time, he would finally avenge the Lancaster family for all that Aaron had done to them. Ronnie would never forget how Aaron used his power to suppress the Lancaster family when they had a falling out. A gentleman's revenge was never too late. Aaron, just you wait and see. In the morning, Rachel was woken up by the sunlight. When she woke up, she felt that the person beside her was already awake. She froze and turned her head. Aaron was beside her, tilting his head and looking at Rachel. He laid there on his side, his defined muscles elongated and stretched. The blanket only covered half of his body. The half-naked look almost made her nose bleed. However, she seemed to notice that Aaron was looking closely at her. She covered her face and peeked through her fingers at Aaron. Why are you staring at me so intently? I'm looking at how you have so much strength for a small person. You were sleeping so ungracefully and you kept rolling around. Rachel blushed. She looked at Aaron and said, I... did I disturb your sleep? Aaron replied, Forget it. I'm used to it anyway. Why not sleep separately next time? I can't control myself either. How would I know what I'm doing in my sleep? You always sleep so late. If you can't sleep properly, then that's going to be bad. Aaron frowned. Why would any newlywed couple sleep separately? But it's all right. I heard that exercise will help you sleep better. Let's do more bedtime exercises tomorrow. If you sweat more, you'll sleep better at night. His hand propped his head up as he whispered in her ear. What bedtime exercises? Didn't they do enough last night? She really thought that it was enough. I still have work, and you're always back so late, I'll be dead tired. She initially thought that he was a pure-minded person. She didn't expect him to be so energetic, wanting to do it every day and tire her out. It was the same last night. She was already sleeping, but he suddenly crept up on her in the middle of the night. Aaron said, Are you blaming me? It's your fault for seducing me. Rachel pouted in protest. Who's seducing you? When we were sleeping at night, who was the one flailing on me? He asked. Rachel was speechless. I flail everywhere when I'm sleeping. Don't tell me that you'll be aroused by anyone flailing on you. You're so wild on the inside. How strange. You were with Melissa for so many years. How did you manage to control yourself? You must have controlled yourself until you damaged your kidneys. <laughs>